So Redfin today announced that they're laying off 13% of their staff. This is the second round of layoffs uh, at Redfin in recent months. So that brings it to a total of about 20% of their staff that Redfin has let go in the past couple months. Um, this really shouldn't come as a surprise. A lot of the layoffs we've been seeing have been in real estate, mortgages, and tech. Uh, and we're now starting to see the layoffs spread out you know, beyond just tech companies, uh, beyond just real estate companies, beyond just mortgage companies. Obviously, mortgage, mortgages and real estate are in trouble. Uh, tech has been overinflated and, and bloated and operating on VC money for a long time. Uh, the layoffs are extending beyond that. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I made a video talking about how uh, the economic crash is going to start after the midterms. Today is Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, the midterms were yesterday. So the fall is about to start now. This whole idea is kind of prefaced on uh, the, the idea that we've been kind of artificially propping up the economy. Uh, we've changed the definition of what a recession is. Uh, the White House and the Fed did that. Google and, and you know investing platforms have kind of gone along with it and kind of thrown out the old definition of a recession and said, oh, well, you know, no, recessions are more complicated than that. We have jobs, so we're not in a recession. Uh, we also had Biden re uh, releasing oil from the strategic oil reserves in an effort to keep gas prices down. Um, and then we also had uh, Biden bargaining or blackmailing uh, OPEC and the Saudis uh, to not cut production until after the midterms. We also have all these media articles saying uh, we may enter into a recession in 2023 as if we're not in a recession already. Now that midterms are over, uh, there's no longer kind of uh, uh, or any reason to kind of artificially keep the economy propped up uh, or to act like we aren't in a recession. And, and day one of this, we're already seeing Redfin uh, laying people off. Redfin stock is down to $3.12, down 16.2% on the day. Uh, if we look at the five day, it's down 26%. If we look at the one month, it's down 35%. Uh, if we look at the six month, it's down 70%. And if we look at the year, down a whopping 92%. Um, you know, I know I know when investing, we shouldn't be catching falling knives. And I realize tech companies are probably not the smartest thing to invest in. But seeing a lot of these tech companies down 70%, 80%, 92%, uh, I just can't help myself uh, but to throw a little bit of play money uh, at some of these companies, thinking that you know when things rebound, whether it be sometime in 2024 or more, more than likely probably early 2025, uh, there hopefully should be some money to be made if these companies are still in existence. One kind of rule I have for myself, it's my feeling, and I think a lot of people probably agree with me, that uh, the market was already due for a correction going into the Mexican beer cough in 2020. It made no sense that market surged and the S&P 500 is going up 33% a year at a time when nothing's being made, nobody's doing anything. It's basically just based on, on fake money being printed by the government. Government And uh, so I feel like not only do we have to, to go back to pre-Mexican beer cough prices, uh, but we also have some type of recession or pullback that was due to happen before uh, the surges in crypto and real estate and stocks happen throughout 2020 to 2022. So one of my rules is like, I won't even consider buying a stock if it's, if it's above a price uh, of say January of 2020. Um, and I'd ideally like to be buying things at, you know, I don't know, 20, 2017, 2018 prices. It's kind of crazy. If you look at the, uh, the five-year chart on uh, Redfin, um, let's see. So j uh, January 3rd of 2020, Redfin was at $21. Uh, if you go back to, you know, I don't know, let's go to January of 2019, $18. Uh, if we go back like almost to the beginning of the stock, which was uh, November 10th of 2017, it opened up at about 20 bucks and 93 cents. Um, so I was willing to throw a couple hundred bucks, throw a little bit of play money at Redfin. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at an article titled Redfin Fires 13% of Staff Exits House Flipping as the Downturn Accelerates. Uh, so they're also stopping their iBuying program or their flipping program. Um, you know, we've heard about meta layoffs in recent days. Looks like all the layoffs are going to continue to get worse for tech, real estate, and mortgages, and uh, is probably going to spread to other industries as well. We've recently talked about how uh, last last month, uh, 
what upwards of, of 40% of small businesses weren't able to pay their rent. Um, with the restaurant industry, it was closer to 50% of businesses that weren't able to pay their rent. We often talk, talk about leading indicators, you know, little clues that you see in the world uh, that tell you that the economy is getting bad. You know, a while back I had mentioned that Brian Phobos had said he'd noticed uh, people weren't flexing quite as much on Instagram. And he said, you know, this could be due to, uh, you know, summer's over, people aren't taking vacations, people don't have as, as much free time. Uh, he said, but I also think it has something to do with the economy. And I've just noticed something kind of driving around. Um, you know, I drove by a TGI Fridays the other day, and it, you know, not that TGI Fridays is some great restaurant that's always packed, uh, but it struck me how empty the parking lot was. I mean, it was literally like one or two cars there, like almost not even enough cars to where you could have staff in there. Um, I drove by a Bob Evans the other day. Again, there were like two cars in the parking lot, and I started paying attention to restaurants, and it seems that like nobody is eating out. Maybe. Uh, more unique mom and pop restaurants, maybe the most popular restaurants in your town people are still eating at. Uh, the top 10% of people are still doing very well. The top 50% of people haven't really started feeling the pain. But uh, with a lot of these chain restaurants, the TGI Fridays, the Applebee's, things like that, uh, I'm starting to notice empty parking lots. And I almost think that uh, you know the future of the restaurant industry and how everybody used to dine out and order out, I feel like that may be coming to an end because here, here's what it essentially boils down to, right? getting a little bit off topic here, but um, 75 to 80% of people that used to work in fast food, restaurants, and the hospitality industry uh, don't want to go back to that since the, uh, the Mexican beer cough. Um, we also know that people aren't happy with those wages, um, and we also know that not only is inflation terrible, not only um, you know, are prices higher than they've ever been, uh, but you know, if, if you start having to raise the price of menu items uh, high enough to actually pay people enough to where people want to go back and work in restaurants again, um, I don't think most people are going to want to pay those prices for food or at least not pay that much for food on a regular basis, right? It's, it's one thing to go out and splurge once or twice a month and get a dinner out or order food out, but you know, a lot of people... A lot of people eat every fucking meal that they eat. They, they eat it out or they order it in. And I, I don't think it's sustainable with inflation, rising prices, um, and then also as much money as restaurants are going to have to pay workers to, to get them into the restaurant. Uh, people definitely aren't going to be eating out three nights a week, four nights a week, or every day of the week. Uh, back during like the, the biggest part of, of the labor shortages during the Mexican beer cough, uh, there was a pizza place that, that kind of made national headlines. It's... Uh, outside of Chicago, kind of up by the Channel Lakes by Fox Lake. But I, I want to say they were paying, I want to say $35 or $39 an hour. It may have even been a, a, as high as $50 an hour for somebody to work in a pizza shop. And uh, if you worked there and referred a friend or referred somebody who wound up getting a job there and stayed for three months or six months, you got free pizza for a year. So it's definitely hard to get people in the restaurant industry. But we're getting off topic. Let's hop back into this article. Uh, this one comes to us from Zero Hedge. Redfin fires 13% of staff, exits house flipping as the downturn accelerates. Housing prices are sliding and sales are plunging as the Federal Reserve hits the pause button on quantitative easing this year with the most aggressive interest rate hikes in four decades to cool the red hot housing market spurred by low interest rates and tight, inventor tight inventories during the pandemic. Um, as a rising rate environment has sent the average 30-year mortgage rate to highs not seen since the dot-com collapse era over two decades ago. This abrupt surge in rates caused an affordability crisis in housing as prices remained at lofty levels this year, forcing real estate brokerage Redfin Corp to slash workers in June. So that was the last round of layoffs. Uh, now the online real estate brokerage has announced a second round of layoffs as well as an exit from its home flipping business called iBuying. Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman sent a letter to employees also published on the company's website about the layoffs. Uh, he indicated 13% of staff or about 862 people will be fired. He went on to say, we're laying off 862 brilliant, loyal people and also closing Redfin now. We'll still need home services, employees for our concierge services to fix up 
brokerage listings, brokerage customers listings. Uh, but since that group spent most of its time renovating the Redfin Now homes, it will get much, much smaller. Now, one thing you have to consider, these are a lot of layoffs, but one thing about Redfin that's kind of different from other real estate agencies, real estate companies, uh, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the real estate agents that work for Redfin uh, are actually employees. They're, they're not contractors. Uh, they're not independent business people like Remax or a lot of these other companies. Uh, when you work for Redfin, which has the, the fixed commissions of 1%, you're actually an employee. You get health benefits, you get other benefits, um, you get a steady paycheck, and there, there must be some type of commission structure in place too. Uh, but you know, it's not like a traditional real estate brokerage where everybody are just independent contractors. I believe Redfin Realtors are employees. Um, so whereas other, you know, Remax or somebody else could lay off a bunch of employees and that, that's not calculating the actual Realtors because those Realtors are not actually employees. Um, let's see here. Besides reducing headcount, Redfin is also exiting iBuying, a large-scale home flipping operation because it's been a massive money pit for the company, Kelman said. Uh, and this is kind of good news for home buyers, although I wouldn't be surprised if Redfin gets back into this. Uh, if the market tanks, there's cheap homes out there. Uh, maybe they'll start this back up. We'll have to wait and see. Redfin now is too much money and risk. And the second problem is iBuying is a staggering amount of money and risk for a now uncertain benefit. We've tied up hundreds of millions of dollars in houses that you yourself wouldn't want to own right now. Even before its overhead expenses, Redfin Now property, Properties segment will likely lose 22 to $26 million in 2022. Uh, however small our eye-buying loss may be compared to others, that loss is still larger than we can afford to bear. Uh, Redfin's troubles also come as the lagged Case Schiller Index showed U.S. housing prices dropped 1.3% from their June 2022 peak in August. This is the biggest monthly decline since the Lehman collapse. The national average home price index growth has slowed for five months, below 13% year over year for the first time since February of 2021. The absolute drop in the growth rate of 2.62 percentage points is the largest ever. Researchers at Goldman Sachs forecast home prices could slide 5 to 10%. Uh, from peak to trout with their official forecast model predicting a 7.6% decline. And when you look at a lot of real estate, uh, lot, you know, a lot of real estate markets, uh, you know, in some markets, homes doubled and tripled in price, you know, from 2018 to 2022 or 20 to 2022. Uh, in a lot of markets, homes were going up 25% a year. So the idea that we're only going to slump back uh, 7% or even 15%, that still doesn't even take things back to, to pre, uh, you know, pre beer cough levels. Uh, lastly, the article finishes off with a, uh, a tweet from the uh, Kobe, Kobisi, Kobiasi letter. Uh, and they kind of uh, show some of the big layoffs that have recently happened. So Twitter uh, recently laid off 50% of its staff, Cameo 25%, Robinhood 23%, Intel 20%, Snapchat 20%, Coinbase 18%, uh, Open Door 18%, Stripe 14%, Lyft 13%, Shopify 10%, Meta it just says thousands. Uh, Apple has a hiring freeze and Amazon also has a hiring freeze. So uh, we're going to cut the video off here. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts on, you know, how quickly are things going to go to shit now that the midterms are behind us? Uh, what do you think about the real estate market? Uh, what do you think is going to happen with layoffs overall in the coming weeks and months and even years? Um, and any other thoughts, comments, opinions, anything else you want to add, go ahead and drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below, uh, ring the bell, click the bell, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.